Hello everyone, Luke here. Hope you're doing well. In this video, I want to take it a little bit of a different format. As you guys are aware, I usually do either the charting on my computer, I do the whiteboard videos. But on this one, I wanted to share more of my intuition about cryptocurrencies with you guys, especially with Bitcoin Cash. So, um, this is very more similar to the video that Vix Weir did with... Um, I forgot what his name is. He has a Jewish last name, but it was a couple days ago. And he talked about the implications of blockchain and why it's coming to planet Earth at this time. It's something that I very resonate with. Okay. So let's backtrack a little bit here. I'm popping it back. Ugh. All right. So if we go back to the 2008 crisis, okay, the banks were on the verge of collapse. You have to realize that everything happens for a reason. If the banks and the financial system were allowed to collapse in 2008, many, many people would have died and it would have been horrific. Okay. Um, many people overlook this fact, okay, when they complained about the bailouts and things like that in 2008. Now, I'm not a fan of bailouts. I'm not saying that the banks should not be held responsible for what they did. But if it, the system was allowed to collapse, it would have been quite difficult for America and for the rest of the planet at that time. It realized that for some time now, everything has been running on a electronic system uh, with credit uh, electronically that is, um, you know, it's instantaneous and it's uh, it has to happen instantly, right? So if the banks were allowed to collapse, farmers wouldn't have been able to get paid, um, you know, the bonds on their farms, everything would have imploded, okay? And we're at a time now where we're very used to digital things. How many people do you know actually own gold and silver? How many millennials do you know um, actually own gold and silver or understand how, how would even understand how to use gold and silver? And so if the banks were allowed to collapse, it would have been absolute chaos, okay? Um, and so everything happens for a reason. And it was cho and you have to realize that things get pushed down from the heavens, okay? So decisions are made and then it manifests on planet Earth. Okay, and the decision was made that uh, the collapse would be postponed. Okay, right around this time, Bitcoin was invented. The white paper was released in 2008, I believe. And since then, we've come a very long way. And what cryptos present us with is an opportunity. They present, they present us with an opportunity to ease the pain of the transition. Okay, because all the problems in 2008 still exist. All these problems with the banks and the derivatives and the debt, all these things still exist, okay? If you're watching these type of videos, you're probably already aware of this. But what cryptocurrencies enable is a much, much smoother transition, okay? Because we're only one software up update away from accepting cryptocurrencies. You think of a grocery store, right? So you go to a grocery store, they have their point of sale system where you can swipe your credit card or tap your Apple Pay. They're only one software update away from accepting Bitcoin or Litecoin or whatever cryptocurrency, Bitcoin Cash, okay? And so the transition can happen very much, much quicker to a sound money than it was possible with the gold and silver, okay? Um, gold and silver have been abstracted away from our society too much to where if the banks were allowed to collapse, like I said, it would have been chaos. Many people would have starved to death. Probably millions of people would have died, even here in America, if the banks were allowed to collapse. Sounds crazy, but I think it was probably, that probably would have been the case. And so it's not necessarily something that you want, okay? You, you always want a smoother transition, okay? And in cryptocurrencies, like I said, it's only an update away from everyone accepting it. It's only an app away from someone downloading a wallet on their smartphone, okay? Which are very widespread through society now. So it's very important that you understand that. And they're a very good uh, sponge for inflation, okay? So Bitcoin can absorb as much inflation as it needs to. That's true with any the, the cryptocurrencies in general. Uh, I do believe we're entering a uh, more inflationary environment and it's important to realize that crypto, you know, there's no limit to how much cryptocurrencies uh, can absorb the inflation, right? Bitcoin, Bitcoin could go to a million, okay? Uh, it could go to a million in, in a couple years if that's how much inflation needs to get pushed into it. I'm not saying Bitcoin will do that, obviously, but what I'm saying is that there's no limit to how much inflation the powers that be can push into the cryptocurrencies, okay? They're really the perfect digital uh, inflation for um, 
to the perfect digital sponge for digital inflation, which is what we have nowadays, right? They don't actually print money. They just go onto the computer ledger and they put another couple of zeros and then voila, there's more money into the digital uh, currency system. Okay, that's basically what uh, exists today. Okay. Now, uh, but we are entering the period where the transition I do believe will speed up and I can feel this intuitively. Um, I can feel this intuitively by Litecoin. Okay, Litecoin is the leader of the market. Okay, um, you should be, if you look at the charts, you'll see that Litecoin has been leading us out of the bear market. I see no, for, uh, I don't see any short term point where Litecoin will not continue to lead us. The reason why Litecoin has led us is because it's a fork of Bitcoin. It's been around a long time. It has uh, the second most liquidity. Okay, it has the second most um, network effects with mining and with transactional use. Okay, and you have to realize something. The Bitcoin fees are going up. Bitcoin fees are already back up to $5 sometimes. And the Bitcoin community, what do they tell people when people get frustrated with Bitcoin? They say, well, go, just, go, just go use Litecoin. Okay. Um, and that's what's happening. A lot of people are choosing to use Litecoin as currency, right? And so I believe that we will see Litecoin continue to outperform Bitcoin. People that say that Litecoin has a ceiling towards Bitcoin. That was true last time around. This time is different. This time Bitcoin is full. It's congested. You can't you can't send it for cheaply. It, it's solidifying itself as a store of value, as gold. Okay. Last time when Litecoin peaked versus Bitcoin, when it had a similar cycle with its halvening and things like that. First of all, Litecoin had many less network effects, and Bitcoin you could still send Bitcoin for a few pennies at max. Okay. And so. Don't get too caught up in the past. Don't get too caught up in fractals of past market cycles. This market cycle is different. This will probably be the biggest market cycle yet in cryptocurrencies because the banks are on the brink this time. Okay, Cryptos have never existed in a bull market while the banks are in a bear market. If you look at the charts of the banks, Deutsche Bank, things like that, and you look at their fundamentals with the banks in Italy, the, these banks are in a bear market. And that's something that you need to understand. Okay. And so you can't compare past cycles to this cycle. And you can't compare past cycles of Litecoin to Bitcoin because Bitcoin fees, because Bitcoin is full this time. Bitcoin, like I said, Bitcoin didn't cost $5 to send last time around. And so from a fundamental perspective, we can only assume that people are going to start choosing Litecoin more and more as the fees of Bitcoin continue to go up. It's only, it only makes sense, right? And I can feel this intuitively. Uh, and we can see this on social media as more and more athletes and uh, celebrities and more, more people are talking about Litecoin. And I, I feel strongly that Litecoin is the second choice as a store of value by the human race. I do feel that. Bitcoin was chosen to be gold. And humans have decided that it will be digital gold. But people don't understand that there's a place, there's a... You know, there's place in the human psyche for two stores of value. That's why gold and silver existed. And there's always existed more than one store of value. Um, so Bitcoin will not be the only store of value. And I do believe that the human race has chosen Litecoin to be the second store of value. And what we're seeing in this bull run is the manifestation of people waking up to the fact that we, at a subconscious level, have chosen Litecoin to be our second digital store of value besides Bitcoin. Okay, so if you take that into account, you realize that Bitcoin is still very undervalued compared to Bitcoin. I expect it to go to 10 to 1. I think 5 to 1 is in the cards. I think it probably will go 5 to 1. I think that the ratio will at least hit 10 to 1. Okay, and we are seeing the manifestation of this, and we will continue to see it during this next cycle, during the next two, two and a half years, during this next bull cycle for the cryptocurrencies. Okay. So that's what you need to know about Litecoin. Bitcoin Cash. I believe the Bitcoin Cash will pass Litecoin again at some day. And I believe the Bitcoin Cash will pass Ethereum. And then it will pass Bitcoin. And then it will pass... I mean, it won't. Bitcoin's the last one for it to pass. But Bitcoin Cash will, I believe, at a certain intuitive level, that it will become the biggest cryptocurrency 
um, in the world. Okay, there's some reasons for that. Energetically, you need to understand something. Bitcoin was co-opted to a certain extent. Digital gold is fine. If people choose it to be digital gold, that's fine. But bad actors and people that did not have the best um, intents for Bitcoin control most of the aspects of the code base now. And I don't know if it was the U.S. government. I don't know if it was some other third party that paid the Bitcoin core programmers to follow the path they have fallen. But the small block crowd is not the truth. It's not the truth. And you need to understand that. Bitcoin Cash is closer to the truth of Satoshi's vision. Okay? Big blocks are not a problem right now. They're not. Go look at the prices of hard drives. How much has solid state memory devices dropped in the last five years? It's insane how much how cheaper they've gotten. You can store a terabyte in a little tiny chip now. It's insane. Okay? And the true this uh, it's coming true with um, also with latency of the internet, right? Latency of the internet is speed. The internet uh, network effects get faster too. Okay, and so Bitcoin has been purposely purposely stalled. Is it for better or worse? I don't know. Maybe it's a good thing that they uh, cemented the protocol to make it a store of value. Maybe that's what the human race needed, and then Bitcoin was going to be. I mean, Litecoin was going to be silver. And then Bitcoin Cash was the means of exchange, or our next dollar, as you could say. Maybe that's a bet. Maybe that's the better thing. But it doesn't take away from the truth that Bitcoin has been co-opted, and BCH is the receive. Bitcoin Cash is the realization of the Bitcoin potential. Now you need to observe something. You need to go and look, watch the videos of most of the Bitcoin Core programmers and the Bitcoin maximalists. I'm talking about Tone Vase. I'm talking about Gregory Maxwell. I'm talking about Jimmy Song. I'm talking about these people. Learn to observe people's body language. Okay. Learn to observe their intents. And see so you can see that these people, they do not have the best of intent, I don't think, um, for the human race in general. And um, many of them cannot think clearly, okay, because they've never run a business. Running business is different uh, than being a computer programmer, than being an engineer. Many of the engineer types in Bitcoin Core have never run a business, and they don't understand how business works. Bitcoin, most of the smart program, the business type programmers understand the use case of it and understand uh, the business um, side of cryptocurrencies move to Bitcoin Cash. Okay. Bitcoin Core has lost all pragmatism. Okay, they're not pragmatic anymore. Bitcoin Cash is the realization of being much more pragmatic, okay? Realizing that the network can handle much bigger blocks and many, many more add-ons, okay? And you have to realize that if Bitcoin was allowed to scale, the world would already be a much different place. I don't know why this is. If everything happens for a reason, we can maybe assume that the cap was put on Bitcoin to not allow it scale, perhaps um, because the world wasn't ready. Perhaps that if Bitcoin was allowed to scale and from the very beginning, perhaps the transition would have happened too fast and it would have been too chaotic. Instead, they had to kind of keep it in, under tact and then allow the, um, you know, allow the upgrades that it could have had go to other coins and so that uh, the transition wouldn't have happened so fast. So Bitcoin couldn't eat uh, so much of the economic activity as fast as it would have. Perhaps that's why it was co-opted. I don't know. I don't know why it was co-opted. But it beca has become very, very apparent to me over time that it is co-opted. And that Bitcoin Cash, the community, the developers, is the realization of Bitcoin's true potential. Okay. Now, I'm still bullish on Bitcoin. Bitcoin will probably go to a million dollars. But Bitcoin Cash, I think, will outperform it. Because it's also a means of exchange. Okay. Being a store of value is fine. But being a store of value and a means of exchange is better. And so one of the reasons why I ever bought Bitcoin is I understood it was better money. Bitcoin is better money. It's actually the best money that was ever invented. Bitcoin is better money than gold. Bitcoin is gold on steroids. Bitcoin is gold if you knew exactly the amount of inflation that was going to happen. It was more deflationary than gold. And you could send it around the world in seconds for a 
fraction of a penny. That was what Bitcoin, that's what so Bitcoin was the best money that ever existed. You need to understand if you understand the fundamentals of money, which is you know scarcity, ease of use, like portability, malleability, you know, uh, and other factors. I think so. I think Socrates talked about this, right? I think Max Kaiser mentioned this. If it's like so, it's a Socrates uh, like principles of money, right? So you have to realize there's economic truth, right? It's not. Uh, it's, economics isn't as subjective as people think it is. It's rooted in, in law. Like gravity. Gravity is a law of the universe. E equals MC squared. Something that is deflationary is better money. It's, a, it's an economic law. Many people don't understand this. Many people don't understand this. Okay. So, Bitcoin Cash is actually better money than Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin has more network effects, which is an important property of money. Uh, it has more hashing power behind it. So, there's more energy going into producing it, which is also an important part of money. But I believe that these network effects will be overcome by Bitcoin Cash. Uh, Bitcoin Cash's ability to be a means of exchange. Okay. Um, and Bitcoin Cash is also in a very unique position compared to the other altcoins. Even something like Litecoin. Because it's a fork of Bitcoin, it inherited a lot of the network effects. So we talk about like network effects with money. Well, if it's a fork and you inherit Bitcoin Cash as part of the, uh, Bitcoin... Uh, you inherit a lot of the network effects of Bitcoin because all the holders if, if, if Bitcoin's a distributed system and there's all these holders holding Bitcoin all of a sudden they all also held Bitcoin Cash so think about it you know Bitcoin Cash inherited a lot more network effects than some of these other altcoins now Litecoin I think is experiencing powerful network effects too because it's been around longer than Bitcoin Cash and it has a different mining algorithm so it doesn't compete with Bitcoin mining like Bitcoin Cash does and I'm bullish on other coins as well. I believe Digibyte will experience sim is starting to experience similar uh, network effects with its mining algorithms. And I do believe Digibyte will be a top 10 coin. Now, I, may, that's, I said in my previous video, I'm more bullish on Bitcoin Cash than Digibyte. Just because it's on more exchanges and has more liquidity, it has more network effects, and has a larger community. And so I think the risk-reward with Bitcoin Cash is great. I think it's better than Digibyte. And it's been outperforming Digibyte. For all the Digibyte haters or Digibyte lovers that I got in my last video, uh, talking shit about Bitcoin Cash and how great Digibyte is, well, Digibyte needs to prove it. You know, it hasn't been do doing so great price-wise, and it's not on any major exchanges soon. And I haven't seen any major announcements or a lot of cool things much being built on Digibyte. I mean, Digibyte's a very, very advanced coin. It's uh, it's, it's, it's as advanced, in my opinion, as Bitcoin Cash, but it needs more network effects. It needs to be on the larger exchanges, and people need to start using it more. And Bitcoin Cash already has enough people using it where it can start to build a vortex into its economic uh, system. You know what I mean? And so, but I do think Digibyte will start to experience more network effects, and it, I do believe that Digibyte will be a top ten coin. I believe that Bitcoin Cash will be the biggest cryptocurrency in the world, and I believe that Digibyte will be a top ten coin. Digibyte could be eventually be a top five coin, but. Um, I think it will be at least be a top 10 coin. Okay. Um, quick thoughts on a couple other coins. I really like Pillar. And I really like Veritasium right now. Um, I think Reggie Middleton. So going back, like if you just watch the body language appeal, Reggie Middleton is very, very healthy for his age. If you compare Reggie Middleton to most American males, look at his muscle tone. Look at his posture, the way he conducts himself, the way he holds himself, the way he talks. You can tell that his brain, mind, body, and soul are working together much better than the general population. And you can tell that he's a very, very smart man, and he believes what he says. And he's putting the work into his project. Richie, Richie Middleton is a, is a work, he's a machine. You know what I mean? He knows how to be a CEO. He knows how to be a leader. And... Um, I think that Veritasium will do very, very well. Well, it'll go one to one with Bitcoin, like Big Square thinks it does, and Cliff High said at one point. No, I don't think it'll go one to one with Bitcoin, but I think Veritasium might be the biggest utility token in the world, and it will do very, very well. Okay, um, Pillar. I very like what Pillar's doing. I think they've turned the. I think Pillar's turned the corner, and they're doing some very, very innovative things that. Um, I don't see any other project doing actually. And 
the way that they're structured their meta token where everything that you do through the wallet is paid for in pillar um i think that taking some of the profits from this litecoin happening pump which i don't think is over yet i think Litecoin will continue to pump for the happening i see no signs of it slowing down but i think catching the bottom for some of these utility tokens that are exploring brand new business models such as pillar populous veritasium i think that those that might be the move of the decade okay buying the bottoms of veritasium pillar and populous might be the move of the decade okay and um that's my thoughts on those tokens okay so I think Litecoin will continue to outperform Bitcoin. Same with Bitcoin Cash. Mostly due to the fact that Bitcoin was co-opted and slowed down on purpose. But remember, everything happens for a reason. Just like we talked about with the 2008 crisis being postponed because it would have been too much chaos. It's not necessarily a bad thing that Bitcoin was chosen to be a store of value. Everything happens for a reason. And maybe we're best off that it's the store of value. And then the exchange functionality of the currency can move to other coins more. Um, but because something like Bitcoin Cash is a better means of exchange, I do believe it will start to experience more and more powerful network effects. And uh, people don't expect it, but it will catch up. It will start catching up to Bitcoin more and more. And people, many people won't like it. Um, but, but there's a deeper lesson for this. Many of the Bitcoin maximalists are very arrogant and they think no other coin should exist besides Bitcoin and they think that all these other coins are scams and they've become arrogant partially because they got wealthy from Bitcoin and sometimes becoming wealthy without any work can lead to arrogance along with the fact that we, we live in a society where arrogance is a rampant problem okay it's pretty that it's very important that you always humble yourself and you always ground yourself, okay? But if you do that and you analyze the fundamentals of some of these coins, I believe, like Bitcoin Cash, I think that you'll also come to the conclusion that it will continue to outperform Bitcoin and catch up to it, despite what the Bitcoin maximalists say and no matter how angry they get. And it will be a lesson of humility for a large part of the cryptocurrency community. They will... Uh, and humility can be important and it can be an important lesson because then you can learn about yourself where you went wrong and why you became arrogant and how and how you can not make that mistake again okay so hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe debate me in the comments i'll talk to you later all right bye